This is Twit. I read on uh, Kyle Ween's I Fix It uh, blog at ifixit.org the most wild detective story I've ever read. Let me let me give you the setup, then we're going to get Kyle Ween's from I Fix It on. Eric Woolridge is a system specialist at a hospital near Chicago. It's called Morris Hospital. They got a brand new MRI machine. Right. And then he starts getting calls from people in the hospital. My phone's died. My phone's died. It stopped working. It froze up. And he thought, what the heck? You know, because it was coincident with his installation of the MRI. Maybe there was an electromagnetic pulse that fried everything. Right. But it, but it was only iPhones from iPhone 6 or later. There was an iPhone 5. Didn't get any problem. And it was Apple Watches. No Android devices at all. Huh. It's a mystery. He, po he couldn't figure it out. Posted it on Reddit. Bunch of sysadmins on Reddit start thinking and say, you know, you should check that machine for a helium leak because it could be the helium. And yes, indeed, this MRI machine, a little tiny puncture, enough for a significant amount of helium to leak into the HVAC system, about 120 liters of liquid helium. Whoa. That's 90,000 liters of gaseous helium. Uh, Kyle Ween says the nurses must have been talking funny for, the, <laughs> for a day or two. It's time for one of them, Mr. Laporte. Kyle <laughs> Weens, welcome from ifixit.org. And before we even talk about this, let me move the balloons out of the way. Before we even talk about this, thank you uh, so much from all of us for the work you did uh, along with the EFF, Corey Doctorow, uh, on getting the Copyright Office to back down, to, 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 to say the DMCA does not protect companies against your right to repair stuff. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, we're really excited about the ruling. We got broad sweeping uh, right to tinker and modify all kinds of products, including it's now legal to jailbreak your Amazon Echo. Isn't that so awesome? You can, Woo! But weirdly hopefully. enough, not your boat, not your plane. Yeah, we, we didn't we didn't <laughs> prove that. Case. Maybe next time. But your tractor, which is huge. I'm sure John Deere is furious right. about this because, of course, they said you can't repair your John Deere tractor. There's copyright protect, DMC protected software in there. And you can't you protect your it. tractor because we made it damn near impossible. <laughs> well, there's another. That's another story. And but the, the big deal this time is that it, they're allowing third parties to do that repair. So you don't have to just fix your tractor yourself. You can hire a nice. mechanic to do it for you. Good. Nice. Still no pressure on these companies to release parts or manuals, but you guys are doing or it. Or service time. diagnostic software. And that's why we're going to need state rights repair legislation. Right. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of states queued up to get started trying again in 2019 for that. So that's a huge, by the way, that's a huge deal. It, this does not mean that those state laws do not need to go forward. We do need those state laws, but now they have some teeth because yeah. of this rule. And, and independent car repair shops have the ability or have the tools they need to repair cars because basically Massachusetts was like, uh-uh. Yeah, thanks to Massachusetts. Yeah, Massachusetts basically yeah. passed a law that had huge influence in the United States, and finally Congress stepped up and went, we should do something that actually benefits the American people. I don't know if current, you know... They're too busy for that. Sorry. You know. <laughs> <laughs> they got other things. The, uh, but that's not why you're here, Kyle. You're here because of these balloons and that smartphone. So, Woolridge posted on Reddit, did you, how did you get involved in this? I was browsing Reddit late at night, as you will do. One and, does, you know, yes. I, I, I frequent the sysadmin subreddit, and I saw the story, and, and this was kind of early in the speculation. People didn't really know what it was. And I saw the helium suggestion and started digging because I knew that there's these these mechanical parts inside these phones. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's something I, I think most of us think the silicon is solid state, but actually inside some of these solid state chips, are MEMS devices, and MEMS is a microelectromechanical system, and it's actually a physical device uh, that is moving around inside inside one of these chips. Uh, we use them for accelerometers, for gyros, and Apple uses them for something that nobody else does. Which is the clock chip. Which is the clock, and the clock is like the heart of the the any computer. It's, it's, it's literally the, the beating heart. Right. Yes, it's the pulse. It sends out every rising clock, Right, the, the literal clock that, that, that makes everything tick starts with this 32 kilohertz resonator. And it used to be that these were quartz resonators, like you think about a quartz watch. Right. Uh, that was, I mean, back in the 60s, 50s, we invented we invented quartz oscillators. That was the beginning of the digital revolution. The problem with those oscillators is that they're, they're kind of big. And by kind mm -hmm. of big, I mean like three millimeter by one millimeter or so. Huge. And, 
Huge. Even Android bigger books. than a headphone jack. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Don't get me started. Uh, and I think probably it was when Apple was working on the Apple Watch and then they decided to put it on the phones too. All and right. so they found this new chip from uh, this little company, Cytime, and it is a MEMS resonator rather than a quartz how, resonator. How micro is a MEMS? I mean, how small are we talking here? Smaller We're talking like 50 jack. microns across. It's 50 tiny. millionths of a meter. That's you can't see it. In fact, the pictures right. you have on your blog post are from scanning electron microscopes. It's so yes. pretty. It is isn't pretty, this cool? isn't it? That's yeah, a so 50, this is an accelerometer. 50, yeah. And what you're actually looking here in this photo, this is actually a busted accelerometer. In the top right, oh, that little arm broke off when they were taking the image. Wow. So you can see so, that's a physical arm, and that one's going to be a little bit broken. Here's another one. They really are lovely. This, this is, is a gyroscope. It's a little bit more complex. And you can also see the scale here is bigger. It zoomed out more. But doesn't this look like the Death Star? Yeah, yes. I love it. <laughs> I can imagine I a little X-Wing going in. So how does helium impact these devices, though? Well, it turns out that, I mean, you can imagine that the size that we're talking about, getting molecules in there can can interfere with them. And there is a ceramic casing on the outside of the, I mean, they call it a, a package. There's a ceramic package surrounding the, this chip. And that ceramic package is impervious to large molecules like nitrogen and oxygen, but small molecules like hydrogen and helium can get inside. You're kidding. And, and, normally, there's, and these little two atom molecules, helium molecules, can physically impede the arms? Uh, yeah, they, they get in there, and and I'm not sure if they act like a grain of sand or it's like if they're, a dust they're particle. Kind of, effectively, a yeah, you think like like a clock getting a getting a speck of dust in the works. So this gets wow. helium in, and it stops the clock. And if the clock stops, your device is toast. It won't respond. It won't be able to do anything because that's it's literally the heartbeat. Is it toast forever? That's what's crazy is, no, it's it's just toast until the helium leaves again. <laughs> and so the question is, how long will it take the helium to leave again? So I did this a few days ago with a phone. I, I uh, you know, I've got my balloon here and I, uh, I put it in a Ziploc bag and with the phone and it, it took about five minutes and the phone died. And then two full days later, the phone came back to life. All right, we're gonna try this. Can you help there us? There was no saving it. Now, if I if I were to open whoa, 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 whoa. this balloon in here, important. did you say there was no saving it? Well, uh, not for two days. Okay, he had to let it air out. Now, yeah. if I if I were to cut this balloon open in here, would everybody's phone die? I don't think it would be enough. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like this would be more widely spread issue. Okay. Right? Yeah, I mean, he had a lot. He had 90,000. Like every time there was a birthday? Yeah. Gallons. But even right, so, leaders. you're going to be dousing this thing in much more helium than the hospital had. I mean, even, uh, you know, 120, or, uh, right? So helium I'm, rises. I'm going to sacrifice two phones here. This is the iPhone 10R, brand new. And I thought we should try this with an Android. Have you tried it with an Android device? I haven't tried it with Android. I'm just relying on Eric's word that the Androids were unaffected. So well, I'm, I'm curious. It could be that, that Samsung is using this. You know, when we do our teardowns, we look inside these devices and we, we note every bit of hardware we can identify. The problem with these sight time devices is they are so tiny. They're, right. they're less than a millimeter square. You haven't put uh, it, an electron microscope? It's hard microscope. to tell what they are. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I was gonna say you have you don't have an electron microscope at the handy. <laughs> I got to fix it. World so, do you have any advice on. for how to do this? Should, Should I? You, uh, helium rises, right? Helium rises. So I should do it yeah, upside flip, down. Flip it upside down and then cut it. You're not gonna be able to like shove a straw in there. <laughs> this, these are high tech balloons. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and. Huh? Oh yeah, no air. Oh yeah. Then we'll know the helium's in there because. It will uh, it will fill the bag. We'll okay. Find out. Unless Patrick's keeping it. Okay, I'm gonna hold it here, cut it here. All right, now it's cut. You got it over there. All right, let's see if it inflates the if if I can inflate the bag. Okay, let's inflate the bag. Wait a minute, I didn't cut it well. I think enough. you have to cut it lower. Got it, can I get it? Okay, it's still sealed. This is so exciting. <laughs> so you were able to you were able to. Uh, Duplicate the results. Oh, there we go. Well, and this is this is fundamentally uh, science, right? <laughs> now you know we have we, to replicate the experiment. We should have been able. We should have put the phones in first, but okay. Now, that's definitely got a got a ball Certainly of helium has in there. Some helium. All right, keep it upside down. Oops, I'm gonna start put the timer. iPhone in here, and I'm gonna start the timer. Boom. Whoops. Introducing bedtime. No. 
<laughs> I don't want bedtime. You'll be able to tap it through the. the can I tap it the through here? In there. All right, let's yeah, seal you it can up. Tap it through the... uh, okay, and I'm going to start the clock. No, I don't. No, stop. Just give me a stopwatch. <laughs> All right, start the. Okay, so it's still operating. We've started the clock. It's sealed, and I think it's got some helium in there. I hope it does. Let's do the same thing with this. Uh, are you Are you ready to do it? Oh sure. Put some more helium in there. Why not? Maybe get a little more helium in there. This. We got to really fill this thing up. Here, put here. The, get this. Get the timer Get this in there first. Okay, wait a minute. Let's... You can. I would actually have the bag, you know, relatively open. I think. It doesn't the really matter. The helium isn't providing a force to expand the the, the bag on okay. you. Okay. Let me let me <laughs> let me get this started. All right. Start the clock on that one. Okay. Start. <sighs> Jeez Louise, okay. Start. Okay. It's always the simple things Stop. that are so emotionally okay. traumatic. Fill it in. Fill in the helium. Pump it up there. Pump up the volume. All right. Oh, look at that. That's a lot of helium. That's a ton worth of helium. Those molecules are going right in that little MEMS, and they're going to screw the hell out of that guy. Okay. There's enough there that I, I clearly got it. it's got something in there. All right. So what, what was your experience? How long does it take to break the phone? Well, the phones that I did had been disassembled previously, and so the waterproof seal had. Oh. Uh, so, so mine died in about three minutes. Whoa. Eric was saying it was about eight minutes for his. So, so I, even I, with a waterproof seal, the helium's going to because it's such a small yeah. molecule, it's smaller right, than right, H2O. Right. It's, Much smaller than water. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to leak in there, and right. uh, and it's going to get in. <laughs> Patrick's taking a picture. Just well, so, so we know what the, so we know what the time was when we started them. Yeah. So the difference in because one's at like one thirty-two, and one's at like fifty. 50. You know what? If either one of them stops, I think we'll know. We're going to have to check in later in the show. This is just one of those things where you think you know how these devices work. You know, all of us have been doing helium. this for how long? And if I had bet you a hundred bucks that I could kill your phone with helium, you'd say, sure, Kyle, whatever. You're crazy. <laughs> and here we are. That is uh, just, yeah. And it's one, it's one of the things that I know Patrick and I certainly, we answer a lot of questions. People will come to us with just bizarre problems and we'll just have right. to say i don't know what i always say though is look there's no magic there's no voodoo these are deterministic machines there's an absolute physical cause and effect for every single thing that happens but we just don't know why that yeah. particular thing happened there, if all you need to do is search through 73 million lines of code <laughs> and some of the most complex engineering ever mass produced in the history of humanity <laughs> and once you've done that you'll certainly eventually probably find the problem it's a testament to the power of Reddit, that's all I can say. <laughs> what I love about this is you can imagine the Apple design engineers when they were picking right. this chip. They knew it was a vulnerability of the chip. This is in the Apple user manual. It says if you expose your phone to helium, it can it can cause it's damage. It's actually in the manual. Yeah. So you can imagine the trade-off. And some poor intern must have had to go out and look at like use cases of helium and figure out what are the odds, <laughs> how many customers is this going to impact. And they must have decided that people installing MRI machines were enough of a small enough segment of the Apple user base that they were willing to screw them over in exchange for a little bit tinier chip. So there are people who this would be a problem for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Since since I published this story, I've gotten emails from like 15 different MRI techs that have all said, oh, yeah, this happens to us all the time. Oh, my so that's not unusual have little leaks in MRI machines when they're when they're first setting them up and calibrating them and getting them I mean because there's actually a lot of off gassing when you're when you're there, lowering there. the temperature initially there's a lot of off gassing there. in here as well go ahead just <laughs> well thank you Kyle I appreciate uh, all you've done for all of us <laughs> on behalf of the screensavers ifixit.org is Kyle's right to repair blog ifixit.com is the site where you can get Repair manuals and tools and parts for everything. Thank you, Kyle, for all the great work you've done. Including Motorola I've, phones now. How long is my voice going to stay like this is my question. Forever. <laughs> At least my whole two days. career shot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> we're we're going to, they're still ticking? It takes a licking and it keeps on ticking. We'll keep an eye on these and see. We need to force the helium in. I think it's in there. I think it's in there. I mean, it's definitely, you Coming know, into the phone. It's it's puffy. Do you think I uh, think I have enough phones? I can I can sacrifice a couple. Yeah, for a day or two, <laughs> or a week. How many phones do you own right now? You don't even. Want